In this episode, I wanted to take some time for you to hear from three different people, all with three very different backgrounds, but all whom I respect tremendously. They're going to talk about how to stand out in social media and put out content that actually matters. You can literally buy fake money. And so you see these Instagram people who have these like stacks of cash, right? And it costs a dollar on Amazon to buy that stuff. But we can see through that, right? Eventually those people are found out. If you're not the greatest champion of your cause, you're gonna lose people. You're not gonna have a bigger reach. Let me share with you a couple of people that I think about. Now, whether you agree with these people or not is irrelevant. I think what we can agree with is that as I show you these individuals that they are champions of their cause. Let's take a look. Would you guys agree with that? Again, I don't care whether you agree, disagree, whatever. Are they champions of their cause? So the question is, what makes individuals like this champions for what they believe? There's five things. Write these things down. Number one, clarity. They know exactly what they do. They know exactly what they want. They know exactly the output they're trying, or excuse me, the outcome they're trying to receive. And they're able to articulate that very, very well. Number two, conviction. Every single one of those individuals is convicted about what they believe and what they share. So much so that they're willing to put themselves out into the world at the risk of ridicule and rejection and everything else that comes with putting yourself out in the world. All of these people have confidence. And we're going to talk about where that comes from. But if you don't have confidence about what you're talking about, people see right through that. People see right through it. Number four, calibration. What do I mean by this? I mean that they're living their life in integrity. And integrity, I think a lot of people think integrity is a virtue that you have. You know what? All right, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Integrity is, a, is, is what a lot of people think uh, is a virtue that, that you have to be good according to some person's definition, right? That's not what integrity is. Integrity is alignment between what you believe and the way that you actually live your life. Because you can be, can I swear? Yeah. You can be an <laughs> asshole and still be in integrity, right? If you believe that and you act that way, that's in alignment, okay? Thank you very much, appreciate it. All right, how's that? How's yeah. that? Yeah. Is that better? All right. So calibration is about living your life in accordance with what you believe. There's this thing that we have, it's called the integrity gap. The larger the gap between what you believe about yourself and the way you're actually performing in life, the less satisfied that you'll be, the less confident that you'll be. That's the integrity gap. So it's about being in calibration. And number four, courage. You guys are going to have to display an amazing, amazing amount of courage. I'm gonna to explain to you why that is here in a minute. Number two, this is something that people don't share a whole lot. Piss people off. And maybe more accurately, be willing to piss people off. Because we don't want to do it deliberately, right? But it's the natural, it's the inevitable. Bryce, you and I have gone on at it on social media a little bit, right? I got love though. Like, uh, and that's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm willing to stand my ground because I know what I believe. He knows what he, he believes. Unfortunately, we're intelligent and mature enough where we can have discussion and still be friends. Some people can't, that's another story. But you've got to be willing to piss people off. This is my favorite part of the presentation. I don't know if I can read these. So I'm just going to share with you six or seven different things over the past three or four days that people have shared with me. Number one, I feel bad for people who think like this. Number two, to be honest, I'm sick of overweight white men from privileged countries being sick of things that don't affect them. Not very manly to be a whiny Christian and with hypocritical tendencies. That's what somebody said about me. Uh, the next one, let's see. This will be enjoyed by those who have clubs and still have one foot in the cave because it's written with a simpleton's predictable grunt, but for men who actually want something to hold on to, it's very lacking, and they spelled it out for me. <laughs> this one right here, uh, let's see. So poorly written and stupefyingly ignorant that it shook me to my core. Perhaps I should give it five stars because it was helpful in the way an enema is helpful. I've been cleansed and finally liberated from all of this manly man stuff. So if you need a good masculinity enema, 
I recommend this book, and you can have my copy so you don't need to buy it. <laughs> How about this one? This one's really good. A thing about manhood, you don't need some punk-ass kid like yourself telling me how I should define my manhood. No man needs a punk-ass kid telling me what it takes to be a man. If you were a man, you would know this. Since you don't know it, in my book, you're still a wet behind the ears, smart-ass, feeling big, mean and tough, screw you and your goofy hairstyle punk. <laughs> wow, I'm taking your man card, you're soft AF. Number four is the only one that has man power or know-how, the rest sound like a woman's opinion, like that's a bad thing. <laughs> and one of my favorite things here, where are your eyebrows, bruh? <laughs> the thing about this one, 30 people like that. <laughs> you got me, you got me. Now the funny thing is, is we've talked a lot about purpose and everything, but I want to dive into something that like might be confounding to me. I know some of you guys here have comedy podcasts. We've got our buddy that's got the Star Wars podcast. That might be a harder question, like cause you're, it, it might be a, a more difficult thing to tap in. Like, well, I'm not changing the world I'm talking about BB-8, but you are. You are because what you're doing by understanding that you are allowing people a slice of entertainment that gives them a relief from their day, when you, can type in, when you can tap into that why and understand that, that gives you a different motivation, and I appreciate let me pick it, make, letting me pick on you, Cody. But your other shows, figure out what is the purpose. Now, you have to include the financial aspect of it. Like I said, we do this for a reason. And we're going to hear shortly from my boy Colby. He's going to talk about monetizing everything that I've been discussing in my remarks today. You will hear options from the other speakers on how to help you fill this out. You've got to figure out how you're going to pay for your show. One of the things that I disagree with, I respectfully, Margaret, when you were up here and you talked about your show being a, a hobby, that is the truth for most people. But it's only because they don't understand how to make it their career. If I was to ask you, hey, if I could help you make 100 grand a month on your podcast, you'd be like, wow, yes. Not that that's what I'm offering, but I'm saying like everybody wants to be able to do that for themselves full time because they love it. So... The way that you are able to build that is to have your foundation set and strong. So you got to include the financial aspect of it. The second one, the results of my show are, who are you impacting? How is your engagement? What sort of responses are you getting back? Do you have a, do you have a pulse on who listens to your show? Do you understand the heaven and the hell of those people? So that you can then tap into how to speak to them more directly. So that you can then nudge them into a way to pay you for your value. Third question. The end game of my show is, I've talked to so many podcasters, they have no idea what their end game is. End game? What? I, I'm just going to do my sh show twice a week. Uh, end game? I don't, I don't know. What do you want your influence to be? What do you want to be doing about it? See, facts are facts and feelings are feelings. The questions that you, that you can ask, there, they're going to have facts. You're going to know what your download numbers are. You're going to know how your email list responds. You're going to know how your engagement is. And your feelings about that are going to matter too. I'm one of those weird guys that I actually think there's something valuable in your feelings. And they're a compass that point you to either the tell of what the real problem is or to let you know exactly where you stand. And with podcasting, I feel, you know, being in it that I'm coming up on four years total, I feel somewhat like a, uh, <laughs> I got to help fix it. As podcasting has, begun, has become more popular, you go to iTunes, there's a lot of crappy shows out there. And when you think about the growth of new listenership into podcasting, the last thing that a new listener needs is to find a crappy show and to think this is what this is all about. I'm out. I'll keep listening to NPR or whatever. Which, ironically, NPR is still on iTunes, so listen to that now. So I would like a commitment from you guys in this room. For your podcast existing and the ones coming up, can we commit to doing our best and putting our best foot forward with our purpose and our clarity in our podcast. Can I get everybody to give me a show of hands that we were on board with that? Woo! Yeah! Woo! How do you differentiate in a sea of Mr. Smiths? You. There's things that they, you've been told 
those mistakes that you make, that you hide, people are dying to hear that. I'm telling you right now you have a responsibility. Like, that is super important. You have to take this serious. You have a story. What's your name, dude? Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, you have gone through something to this point I'll never go through. It was probably super heavy that you thought was going to kill you. Am I right? I've only met one or two people that are like, no, nah, man, my life's been pretty good. Are you the third? I might be the third. Uh, you're a dick. <laughs> Bryce, have you been through something so heavy you were like, I'm not going to make this. I'm not going to make it through it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill myself. I'm going to kill somebody else. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I'm not going to make it. You're here. Congratulations. You are here as part of your story. You've, you made it through whatever that adversity was that you didn't think you were going to make it through. Just a raise of hands. You can't, you're such a dick. Dude. Such a dick. No, no, no. I, I have not, I've had an awesome life. I'm not miserable. At a show of hands, just how many people have gone through some heavy stuff they didn't think they were going to go through? That's a better way to ask the question. Yeah. It's still a dick. That's a real hard thing. But you're here and you made it. Your journey is what makes you different. And to see the medium that you participate in, whether it's video, whether it's social media, whether it's audio, your story outside of the topics you cover, the other pieces are just the mediums as to how you deliver the message. Someone right now that you don't know, you've never met in like Missoula, Montana, is about to go through something that you've already gone through. And what do they think? I'm in this alone. I'm never going to make it out. I'm an idiot. Nobody else has gone through this. Just like we started this discussion. You have to find them. You have to find them. Like, it's your responsibility. I've put out over 140. Like, I recently hit an interesting milestone on Instagram. I had 4,200 posts. And I had somebody razz me about engagement. I thought, okay, dude. All right, smart ass. Let me look. Went back to my, I don't ever use my real name. My, name, my name's Colby Colobus. I use Colby K because people screw my last name up. Any of the things I create, I never use my name. So I'm trying to think, when was the first thing? It was YouTube. It was 2004. I can't remember my first site, but I remember the second one. I go through YouTube. First video, 2004, was when I was in the music business doing like rating music and records and then making beats and then like this music thing. Started in 2004. Counted up how many views. I wasn't in for the engagement. It was how many posts have I done. And then I was like, what do I do next? LinkedIn. I went to LinkedIn right after YouTube. I went to LinkedIn. I was like, how many posts have I done on LinkedIn? 125 like blogs, like long form content. Been on the, on the platform a long time. Then I went to Twitter. And you can see how many tweets you've done. All this stuff is public. Go to I'm Colby K. You can find out all these numbers and do the math. It's higher, it's higher than what I'm going to tell you. Then I went to Facebook next. How many posts have I done? It added that up. Instagram, 4,200. It was 40, it was like one or two away from that milestone. And I was like, okay, so let's say I do a couple more posts, that'd be 4,200. I've created 14,057 14, pieces of content in 14 years. I've done 10,000 in two years. As my friend Les Brown says, I do not say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you. Because the question that you asked Tyler is why do you do it? I don't know if you caught the answer. I had, there's somebody out there that I'm gonna make an impact on and I'm just going all in to find them. I've got a skill, I've got a talent, I've got the financial resources and I wanna find that person. So he's doubling down. That's what I've done, I've doubled down. I challenge you to do the same thing in your platforms. Remember your odds, just of being here. One in four, a lot. 400 quadrillion is the number. When you look at what you're doing in your podcast, your video cast, your personal brand, or in your life as you walk out this door, all I need is one of you. If there's 50 people in the room and 49 of you tell me to go to hell, and one of you leaves and goes, you know what? That time that one thing happens, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Don't get into vulnerability, masturbation, where all you do is talk about how shitty your life is. That's a great, I hate that circle of like, oh, maybe how bad my life is. 
you talk about the strengths, what you went through, what you met, what what you meant, what you went through, what you learned, how you overcame, how you adjusted, and what you learned through that experience. Somebody's waiting. So as you go through that journey, remember this is just the start. When you're hit with that adversity, that's when it starts. Not when you were born. You're going to have obstacles. You need to have an understanding that your formatting on your slides is not always going to be optimal. <laughs> you need to understand that the road is never going to be as smooth as you think. And there is no easy way to success. One of the number one questions I used to get asked was, do you know an easy way for me to make money? And I'd always laugh. Dude, if I did, don't you think I'd be doing it? Next question, please. <laughs> I haven't answered that, but... And then now, your journey starts now. The energy that comes with the things that you've experienced need to be shared. You, your journey is what separates you from all the crowded marketplaces that, you can t that you're going into and sharing your story with. You're the differentiator. Those who lead inspire. I challenge you to go out and inspire. That's it. <laughs>What's up guys, if you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page, then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down, and when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we wanna have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first, and we'll see you next time.